great game against Conor Ben. How many of them truly believe they can win the fight? Chris Algieri, he's got money, he's got world championships. He doesn't have to be here. He's here because they think they can beat him and they fancy the challenge. So I think it's a great clash of styles. You know, the, old, the older, experienced world champion against the young lion in Conor Ben. And uh, Conor's got to be really switched on and sharp in this fight because it's not going to be easy. The talk started with... Uh, M MVP uh, Regan Taylor Serrano? Yeah, for a long time. Uh, we're in a great position. I think that's that fight's virtually agreed, really. Um, both girls have just got a win, and I'm quite nervous for Katie on Saturday because, again, when you've got a fight like that in the pipeline, just want to see both girls win over the next couple of weeks, and I'm almost certain you'll see that fight in April at Madison Square Garden. Last about uh, Demetrius Andrade ordered to fight Janine Beck. Is that going to happen, or is he like? I don't know. I mean, it's disappointing because obviously we wrote to the WBC to try and get the Charlo fight ordered, and the WBO as well. And the WBO just ordered the Janine Beck fight. Nothing against Janine Beck, but it's another fight for Demetrius where we're going to just get criticised, and no one knows who the challenger is. Um, he needs a big fight next, and if that means vacating and moving up to become mandatory at 68 or, or some kind of eliminator against a big name, that's definitely something we'll consider. You said you spoke to Tiffany my local senior after the mm. Cambodian fight. Have you had any conversations since with him about it? No, I'm waiting for the apology still. But um, there's a lot of emotions that night. You know, I mean, obviously his son, it, his life had just been turned upside down. You know, he was the hottest thing in boxing and all of a sudden he just got beat by a guy that was a massive underdog in the fight. So it was disappointing. You know, on the Friday, his dad said, this is the greatest team I've ever worked with, greatest promotion we've ever been involved with. And, and then a few hours later, he wishes he'd never done it with Matrim because if it was on the top ranked show, the judges' scorecards would have been different, apparently, which I'm not sure how that happens. But um, he said some silly things. And, you know, but I also understand there was a lot of emotion running around that night. Last one from me. Uh Fury White, uh, Fury White is ordered. Uh, realistically, for that, for a deal to be agreed, does it have to be a joint pay-per-view between BT and Tazone? No, he, you know, Tyson Fury is not going to agree a deal for that fight to land with Matra, I don't think. But we and, and Dillian White would agree to the right deal from top rank for that fight. But it has to be a deal that gives Dillian White the credit and the respect, more importantly, that he deserves. He's been waiting for a long time. And we don't yet know what the official split is for that fight, but you can't really negotiate a fight until you know what you're negotiating. So when purse bids are called for that fight, we'll know what the split is. We would like to make a, a significant offer for that fight or a significant bid for that fight. So we know what that bid will be and the offer that comes in from the other side has to be competitive with the money that we would pay for that fight. Because if not, it will go to purse bids. But no one's looking to be difficult or clever. Gillian White wants his shot, but he also wants the, the credit and respect that he deserves in those negotiations. Will you now press ahead with the Joshua Usyk rematch? Yeah, we're always pressing ahead with that. You know, I had a couple of conversations with people about a, an alternative route um, that involved maybe Joshua having a warm-up fight first. He didn't want to do that. So gladly, I don't have to have those discussions with him. Um, Eddie, talk to us a little bit about the lightweight division. Obviously, it's absolutely stacked. We saw an upset in Cambosis Jr. and Lopez. Then we saw Devin Haney win. We saw Tank win. We've got Lomachenko coming up against Komi on Saturday night. What does the lightweight division look like to you? It's just a brilliant division. And, and although we're not yet getting the complete mega fights, we're getting a great run of fights, which is always great. Cambosis, uh, Tiafimo, tremendous fight. Haney last week. And now we want to see the undisputed fight between George Cambosis and Devin Haney in Australia. So, um, and then you've got Ryan Garcia coming back next year. Um, so many big fights to make. These, these guys should just be fighting each other over the next two or three years. One, one against the other. You saw it you know, with, with Hearns and Leonard and Duran years ago. This can be the same kind of era but they have to fight each other. So hopefully Haney Cambosas, maybe Ryan Garcia fights Tank, I don't know, Tank fights Devin. They can do that two or three times like a round robin. That's their career done. That's their money made, that's their legacy made. And uh, it's very exciting. That it's quite unusual to see so many young fighters at the top of that division. And the good news is, is they all, and you've got Shakur Stevenson, who's super featherweight, but will eventually move up as well. What do you make of Bob Aram's comments that the WBO are suggesting that Lomachenko is going to be the mandatory for Cambosis Jr.? I think that would probably be the case. You know, I think he'll push very hard with the WBO. He has a good relationship with them. And, you know, Lomachenko has a right as well, if he keeps winning, to, to become mandatory. And you know, this is why it's important for Cambosis to make the Devin Haney fight, because he needs that undisputed fight. He won't want to fight Lomachenko. 
you know, he believe he can beat Devin Haney, he can do that fight in Australia, and he should look to make that. Certainly that would be allowed before a mandatory, uh, especially with George Cambosis just winning the belt. So we'll see what happens. What are your thoughts on uh, Amir Khan versus Kel Brook? Obviously a little bit later than everyone would yeah. have liked. Good, good fight. I mean, it's not, it's nowhere near what it once was. And I know it's had a lot of criticism, but it's still a, a good fight, you know. And you can't knock the guys. They've both had tough careers. They've both sat down and sort of agreed with each other. Look, let's put the rubbish aside. Let's just make as much money as possible. And that's what it is. And no one should blame them for that. There's no point coating it in anything different. They just want to cash out before they retire. But it's still, you know, still, I guess, a 50-50 fight. And, you know, um, better late than never, I guess, is the, the wording on that one. And last one for me. Um, obviously, we've seen Tommy Fury step aside because of some medical situation uh, for the Jake Paul fight. Um, what's your thoughts on Jake Paul? I like Jake Paul. I think uh, sometimes annoying, uh, often amusing, uh, but very smart. You know, and he's putting the time and effort in into his boxing. Anyone's got the right to take up boxing. I know you do a little bit as well. I could turn pro, wouldn't last very long, right? <laughs> you could turn pro. If you get a license, you know, if you get cleared by, by a commission, everyone's got the free choice to fight. I don't like it when people say, oh, he shouldn't be earning that type of money. You know, he hasn't gone through it. Doesn't, he's built that opportunity for himself. So, you know, it's not been given to him. He built that platform. He built the profile to go and do anything he wants and make money. So he's not, he's never going to be a champion. He's not horrendous. I've seen worse professional fighters. He's not bad. Yeah, so, but he's smart, you know, he's, I think he's good for the sport because I think he's engaging a different audience into boxing. Thank you very much. He beats Woodley again. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I'll say about that is, is look how quickly he moved. Do you know what I mean? There's been a lot of people go, oh, oh, oh. And, and then you always find out, you know, when you find out as a promoter that fights off, there's a window of an hour to about 48 hours before people find out, depending on who you're working with. So he would have known well before we knew that Fury was out of that fight. But he's moved quickly, he's gone out, he's got replacement straight out, and when the news is broken about Tyson Fury, he's gone, this is my new fight. So, you know, it's smart, and you know, it's a disaster for Tommy Fury, but I'm sure he'll be back in, in some form. Why didn't uh, Design take on, bro? Uh, because we got asked to do it and the money they got offered was not something we were prepared to match. Um, Terry, Ke I mean his dad, drove down to, that, uh, Kel's dad, drove actually to the DAZN party yeah. and said, this is our offer, do you want to match it? I said, no. And when I withdrew my offer, it was just because I just wanted to make Conor Bent against Amir. You know, I didn't have any of those guys and I, I just thought Conor Bent against Amir Khan was a tremendous fight. But, and uh, Amir Khan's dad seems to be upset with you. Do you know what that is? Is he? Yeah, apparently so. That's what he said. Well, if you're not upset with me, you're not You're not, you're not doing something right. No, exactly. Eddie, just one question for you. Obviously, another card with uh, Casey on the table. Or Casey on Katie the table. Um, Casey on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Casey on the card. Um, it really seems like the last couple of weeks she's starting to settle into mm. almost like her own legacy. Yeah. You mentioned here tonight, or today, that her opponent was always a fan of her, is mm. a massive fan of her. Do you think that she started to kind of recognise that and was sort of relaxing into her role as a sort of go-to woman body? Yeah, I think that um, there's so many great young fighters coming through at the moment. I know probably half a dozen fighters, amateurs, uh, sort of novices who are coming on Saturday and they can't believe they're going to get to see Katie Taylor in the flesh. And that's when you know you, you're working with a star. So she, I don't think sometimes she realises what she's done for, for women's boxing. Because yeah. all of these girls, she's their hero. But the worrying thing when you've got everything, like the Undisputed Championship, is it just takes one slip up and you let someone in to win them all. So like Sharon Cobra's thinking, if I beat, and they all look at them, they all try and tell themselves Katie's on the decline. She's getting old, she's not the fighter she was. I don't believe any of them. But that's what they're thinking. Wow, I beat her, I'm undisputed. She's got big backing from the Kazakhstan, Boxing Federation, all these sort of people. So, and when you talk about Serrano, Serrano, sometimes you can put in an under par performance. I actually think we're going to get a great performance yeah. from Katie on Saturday, and I think the atmosphere will be brilliant. Absolutely. Do you think, um, you know, Obviously, we just saw in Ireland and, and, and Gilgit, they released uh, Katie the documentary. Does Masha plan on doing anything similar? Like, you know, do something kind of feature length around Katie in her next Yeah, season? she's, um, 
she's never putting her hand up yeah. to do that, <laughs> give that kind of access. Yeah. You know, she doesn't like interviews. She yeah. doesn't like the limelight. She doesn't want promos. I mean, but obviously that's our job. So the film Katie, which was available on Netflix and, and a lot of other platforms, was great, and it was done by um, a gentleman called Ross, who who she trusted and she liked. So he, she he just followed her around. But if I went to Katie and said, I want to do this documentary series on you, it's just no. Anything that gets in the way of her preparations is a big no she, she could have even been a bigger star, but she did it her way, with credibility, do you know what I mean? And integrity, rather than just, yeah, I'll do all these. She's turned down millions in sponsorship. Millions. It's just no. Oh, this one involves four appearances. Oh, no, no, you know. Yeah. Sometimes Ryan Peters is like, no, 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 but that's Katie, and that's why she should be loved. Yeah. Because she does it for the purity of the sport. So, final question for you as a promoter, then, in the, the years that you've had in this game, do you just have to learn to adapt to who the fighter is? And just accept that some of them are not as keen on media as you are? Yeah, I think it's, you know, everyone's different, aren't they? You know, and, uh, I knew that from Katie the, the minute she came in the office, yeah. you know. And although she appears very quiet, she will always let you know her opinion. If she doesn't like something, she'll tell you. Yeah, you know, I mean, she's. We've had a few conversations in the past. I've said something which she didn't quite like, and I've been told off. And she, she scares me. Okay, you know, she's a good friend, and I love her. But she does. You know, I'm, I'm a bit afraid of her. Um, and she, but she knows what she wants. But it's, as long as you deliver everything you promised her, which we've always done, and you allow her to box as frequently as she wants to box, you never let her down with a fight or a schedule or an opponent, then you'll get on. But if you do, then listen, you're in big trouble. So we haven't done it yet. Good stuff. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Have you got things to say about Conor Ben? How far do you think he is off the road for um, you? I'm nice and calm on Conor Ben. I think hype is great and that's my job as well. But I want to get it right. You know, he does big numbers. He's so exciting to watch, but you've got to get the, the process right. This is the perfect fight to show us how far away he is from world championships. I think this and two more fights, and then he should fight for a world title. And the winner of, say, do you want to I do, but I just feel that, you know, I, I had those conversations with Amir Khan. It's not that he's scared of Conor Ben, but he didn't want to fight a young, hungry lion. You know, he looked at the Kell Brook fight and said, look, we've both kind of agreed here, let's just have our last little payday, which they deserve. But they don't really want to fight a young, and I don't think they'll fight again, the winner of that fight, to be honest with you. So, um, for Amit, for Connor, I'd like him to fight Adrian Broner. You know, I think that's a really big fight for him in the UK. He's a, a household name, Adrian Broner, as well. But he's got to get past Algeria, it's not easy. How do you see it going on Saturday night? I think it's going to go deep in the fight. I think uh, it's going to go to the, to the last quarter of that fight or even on points. Algeria's got money, he's got world championship. He's here because he wants to fight in the UK and he thinks he can beat Conor Ben. They all look at Conor and see holes. But he's ferocious, he's fast, he's spiteful. And it's different when you get in there with him. But he is still, it's not a novice, but he's just, you know. The, Algeri beat Provodnikov, he had a life and death with Khan, he went the distance from Manny Pacquiao, he's boxed at a much higher level than Conor Ben. He doesn't look at Conor Ben and go, oh, oh, I can't believe I'm fighting Conor Ben. He just goes, this is a young kid with potential who I can beat. Eddie, with um, Cambosis in his win, is the, is the sights firmly set on Australia now for yourself? I think so. I mean, Australia is a big market for us anyway. And to go there and create a sort of history fight like that would be great. Obviously, Lou DeBell is his promoter. We'll have to speak to him. But, you know, sooner or later, he's going to get loads of mandatories put on him. So he's better off having that undisputed fight against Devin Haney, making as much money as possible. And hopefully we can get that made. Another name over in Australia is Tim. Does he have you been keeping an eye on his career as well? Good fighter. Yeah, good fighter. Um, I know the, his promoters over there, Matty Rose, and, and they've done a good job with him. I would like to see him box internationally. You know, what, this is a problem with Australian fighters. As much potential that's in that market, you have to allow that fighter to box all around the world because there's a massive market in the US, there's a massive market in the UK, and I just feel with Tim, I'd like to see him have a fight in America, you know, because he's a big star, big name, but they've done a great job for him there, and, and you know, I think he's, sooner or later he's going to fight for that world title. Three years ago, we were for, uh, not here, but over in Sheffield for Zarafa versus Paul Brock, yeah. uh, another Australian. Mm. Um, 
did you think that the world of boxing would be looking at Australia now? Because it just seems like the flavour of the month, doesn't it? I just think that, you know, Australians are very similar to us. You know, they love their live sport, they like a night out, they like a beer. And um, when you've got countries like that, then boxing and darts, which is a, a big sport for us in Australia as well, um, has huge potential. But it, it needs talent. You can't just say, oh, let's go to Australia and start boxing without the talent. And now with Cambosas particularly, with Tim Zhu, you know, with, with Dempsey McKean, with Brock Jarvis, with Ebony Bridges, you know, got great amateurs, Sky Nicholson turning pro and stuff like this. That's where you need to develop a roster, build athletes, build uh, personalities. But if you don't have fighters that can't go to the world level, these guys, you know, the fans aren't idiots, but they do have some great fighters there now. It's going to really help the growth. As a business owner and a member of the public as well, um, what were your thoughts on the MPs? Restrictions that are possibly going to happen. How does that shape up your show for next week? Is it? I mean, does that do? No, I think it's quite. You know, I think people are used to it now. You know, I mean, you look at the Euros, similar kind of environment, and and next week. You, know, you have to be double vaccinated or have a negative test. We sold a lot of tickets for next week. I, I, I'm confident everybody going accepts the world we live in and says no problem. You know, a huge amount of those will be double vaccinated, and if they're not, they'll get a negative test and come. So you've just got to do what you got to do. You've got to follow the rules. You know, rules are there. Not everyone agrees with rules, but they're rules, and we have to abide by those rules. Hopefully, we can get through this little period again and go back to normal in January. Good stuff, all the best. Cheers. Is that all right, guys. Um, so just in terms of you uh, and guys, Eric, cheers. Mike, mm. see what you can yeah, take care, mate. You're in the problem. Yeah, it's just matters to be fine. Um, just how happy are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Really happy and, and well deserved. You know, uh, the Povetkin defeat was really tough at the time because he was there then. And he's had to come back, win that fight, of course. And you know, now he's going to get what he deserves. And that's a shot at the World Heavyweight title. Um, in terms of Tyson Fury, Tyson is showing and his agents of pussy. Yeah. Um, does that affect Andy Joshua and his, and his intent to go on and fight? Yeah, I think he's in a quite a violent mood at the moment, you know, after that defeat, because he's very frustrated. Um, but it's nice, you know, Tyson Fury is, you know, calling out his name, and I do believe you'll see that fight. I think you'll see all those fights, because AJ's not going anywhere, you know, he's got another three, four, five years in the game. Um, Fury keeps talking about retiring, but if the money's there, he'll always be around. Uh, Deontay Wilder came out and said that he could retire, he's mm. done everything that he can do in boxing, does that even surprise you? No, nothing surprises me what Deontay Wilder says, but you know, he has raised his stock considerably in, in the last fight. But you know, in the division, the great thing about the heavyweight division is all these guys can beat all these guys. So, you know, Deontay Wilder could lose to Derek Chisora, Joseph Putt, like, you know, on that night. Or he could, he could beat Alexander Usyk. He nearly beat Tyson Fury. Do you know what I mean? So, but that's the exciting thing about the division. So I hope he stays in boxing because he's very exciting.